Hello everyone, this is Michael, though you may know me from Reddit or other places as Scourgicus, and today we're going to be talking about religious films. This summer I've been teaching a class at my church on religious films, and we've been looking at a lot of the movies that came out in 2014, Hollywood's so-called Year of the Bible. And as we've been studying these classes, we've been asking ourselves several questions. You know, what are these movies about? Uh, do they have a message? And if so, what is it? And uh, what do they say about what we believe as Christians? And if they're not made by Christians, and several of them weren't, what do they say about what we believe? These movies are saying a great deal, but I do think that there is a common theme, and that is that we as believers feel embattled. In God's Not Dead, it's an atheist professor who's trying to suppress the faith. In Heaven is for Real, it's the pastor's own doubts. In Son of God, it's the government and religious leadership. In Calvary, it's the church's past sins coming back to haunt us. In Noah, it's those who refuse God's way, especially with regards to creation. And in Exodus, it's a government that is using slavery and racism to control believers. In other words, these movies suggest that we as believers feel like we are at war with the world, when really all we want to do is love God. I would say then that these movies tend to be what's referred to as protective strategies. Uh, that is that they teach us to defend our faith, how to overcome our doubts, and to achieve victory, whatever that might mean, uh, against the people who are trying to suppress us. Now, I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with making movies like that. In fact, Christians have been doing this sort of thing almost from the beginning. One of the earliest church fathers, St. Justin Martyr, actually wrote two apologies, or defenses or explanations, about why Christians weren't cannibals and why we actually made decent citizens and didn't need to be killed. Personally, I think it's fascinating that we had to write these kinds of things in the beginning. Uh, church history is pretty wild. Uh, in any case, while I don't think there's anything wrong with making these kind of movies, I do wish that our movies would do just a little bit more. We live in an astonishing and difficult time, and while we're surrounded by amazing leaps forward in technology and medical care, we're also surrounded by intolerance, hatred, and fear, but also a willingness to ask questions and seek answers. Now, one of the ways that people have tended to do this in our culture is through stories. One of my favorite TV shows is called The Walking Dead, and it's a story about the zombie apocalypse, and it follows a group of survivors who are led by a former sheriff named Rick Grimes. Now, Rick's group will sometimes have to do terrible things to survive, and there's this theme throughout the series of trying to maintain your humanity in a merciless world. Now eventually, they come into conflict with a larger, more powerful group led by a man named the Governor. And uh, it's likely to come to war, and it's likely that Rick's group is going to lose. Now the Governor says that he's willing to let Rick's group alone if they will do one thing for him, and that is to hand over one of their members, a woman named Michonne, uh, with whom the Governor has had some dealings in the past. Now the group is conflicted because they're pretty sure that he's going to kill her, and this is just another terrible thing that they'd have to do. And they really wrestle with it. Well, in the group is a man named Merle, who had worked for the governor until he eventually joined Rick's group. And Merle has kind of seen himself as the type of person who will do what other people won't do. So he kidnaps Michonne and takes her to the governor. On the way there, Michonne asks Merle how many people he killed while he was working with the governor, and he tells her 16. Then she asks him how many people he had killed prior to working with the governor, and he tells her, none. And then Michonne makes an amazing statement. We can go back. We can just go back. And from interviews that I've seen with the actors and conversation with other fans, it seems pretty clear that what Michonne is telling him is not simply that we can go back to the group, but we can go back to the people that we were before this. 
I'm not going to tell you what happens with Myrtle. Uh, you'll have to watch the TV series to, to find that out. But we did watch uh, some of that scene in class. Now, it strikes me that The Walking Dead is not a particularly Christian TV series. Uh, it certainly doesn't seem to be uh, attempting to share the gospel, though it does talk a lot about religion and faith and these types of things. But it strikes me that if The Walking Dead can ask these kinds of questions, make these kinds of statements, and seek the types of answers that it does, why can't Christian films and Christian TV series? So while I don't think that there's anything wrong with protective strategies uh, and making movies that help us to understand our faith better uh, or how to defend our faith, sometimes I think that what the world needs most from us isn't better arguments for the existence of God uh, or better sermons. Maybe they just need really good stories. All right, so that is the sum up for my class, and uh, I want to thank everybody that came this summer. I think we had a lot of fun, and uh, we really enjoyed some of the movies, had some pretty great conversations, and uh, I will see you either next summer or sometime in that area, and I have no idea what we're going to do then, but I think we're going to have a lot of fun. Thank you, friends, and God bless you. Stuff and things.